Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Trap on the Boomer Bus channel, a Bears podcast by a Bears fan. I'm your host, Terry, and today we are going to break down the latest with the Bears free agency. We're going to look at this roster, and then, of course, we got to talk Fields and Caleb Williams. Um, so, we should start with Caleb Williams, Justin Fields. That makes sense. That's at the top of the discussion of the roster. So, number one, we have reports coming that the Bears have not been seriously shopping Justin Fields. And that is just what we needed for this whole discussion. And to follow up with what I said yesterday, um, what what I was saying at the end of the episode was essentially um, that people care more about being right than being excited about the Bears future. And so obviously some people are going to argue that those two overlap, and I'm sure it does for some people. But what I was mainly trying to say is that I was very shocked that we weren't going to just overall enjoy the fact that we're in an excellent position to do some historic things. And 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 I thought that we all understood it was a win-win no matter what we end up doing. Um, I Because, look, at the end of the day, if Justin Fields goes on to be better somewhere else, as I already told you, that is a completely idiotic line of thinking as a reason to keep him. Um, every team is different. If you get different results, it's because you have literally everything about the team that is different. Um, so I would expect that he would look different with a different team. But on top of that, if he does, fine. We had three years. We 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 uh, for the most part we understood what it was, and you know we 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 got opportunity to go in a different direction. Um, and if Caleb Williams isn't the guy, you took Caleb Williams, a pro, uh, not the name, but a prospect of his type of talent. And it doesn't matter kind of what the uh, future holds. And I'm sure a lot of people disagree, but it's true. You you go for the talent. Like, it's, it's one thing you, oh, I'm going to take a Darius Hayward Bay, like the Raiders, or I'm going I'm to reach for, uh, uh, what's that boy's name? It was a bunch of them in that draft. Matt Liner, Jake Locker. Or Jake Locke, uh, I forgot his name, but like it, it's one thing to do that and miss. It's another to have a consensus top talent, albeit you might not be completely sold on the person, but to have a consensus top talent and to swing on that, to me, that's I don't have an issue with that. Um, of course, people are going to bring up Trubisky and all that, which I think is the dumbest argument. The only thing I'll give you is that we and technically that's not true i was gonna say we had the first crack at the quarterback technically the browns did so when everybody keeps saying we're the team that passed on the quarterback um uh, or that passed on Mahomes, a bunch of teams passed on Mahomes. so we i don't understand what we're talking about but anyway point is um even in that situation, that's not, again, there's no argument. Those were not top prospects. This is a bona fide top prospect. And so I'm okay taking that swing. So I thought it was going to be an exciting time. But as I said, Bears fans seem to care more about being right, which is just weird to me. Like, it's not offensive to me when someone says we should keep Justin Fields. I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, obviously, if I, there's a, cause you know me, I'm never saying, hey, this is what we're doing. Like, as a matter of fact. And yet, we have a ton of fans that do that, that talk like they're the ones making the decision. And as soon as you, okay, cause my response is, all right, based on what? And they, they never have anything more than what we all know publicly because, of course, they don't know anything. But to me, that's just a simple discussion. Like, we have a philosophical discussion. But anyway, this has turned ugly and it is what it is. But let's get back to the point that the rumors are coming out that the Bears 
are not really shopping Justin Fields. And to be honest, I heard Rappaport kind of talk about it, and it doesn't does it doesn't necessarily seem like this to me, unless I miss something, doesn't seem like he's saying this is what I've heard. It almost sounds like he's speaking for the Bears. Um and that just that that makes it more it seem more possible that the obvious answer is the correct answer, which is the Bears is feeding that narrative out there. And so even I call it rumors because to the Bears say it, I'm gonna just call it a rumor. And so if that's what's being put out there, my initial reaction, like a lot of people, is the, the Bears are putting it out there. They're spinning the narrative. It's a BS narrative. And then, of course, you just add fuel to the fire to the fields apologist who want to burn anything that points at Justin not being the starter. And so now we, we got this debate going again. At, at the end of the day, again, I told you my initial thoughts on what it is. But if we really dig into it, I've already talked about Justin Fields' market. And obviously that didn't change in one day. But if you really look into it, parts are going to be true. Some parts might not be fully true. The Bears are trying to do their due diligence on Caleb Williams. But people are speaking as if that is new news. We've already known that's what they're going to do. So we've already known that they're going to talk to him at the combine. They did. We already know they're going to attend his pro day. It's coming up. They will. We already knew they're planning on to get him in the building as quick as he can, as they can. And he said not till after his pro day. So that's going to happen. So, of course... None of the other stuff hasn't happened yet. So, of course, they're still planning on doing that. That's not new news. But this is how people create false narratives. They lump these things together. So to say that the the trade market has to do with them wanting to do their due diligence on Caleb is silly because we already knew they were going to do their due diligence on all these quarterbacks. And so... That has no impact on trading Justin Fields, in my mind. The 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 tr- the discussion about the market in terms of it's not what people thought it was. That's true because at the end of the day, if you really believe that, oh man, this is the answer to all my problems. Justin Fields is viewed as a great quarterback. The Bears just aren't trying to shop him. If you believe that, let's just follow the logic here. If teams really felt that way, do you think they would go pay other quarterbacks or do you think they will wait? Do you think that it is really that much better for me to have Brissett or for me to have Drew Locke or for me to have Sam Darnold or Kirk Cousins coming off an Achilles? I'm going to pay these people. Some of them got a lot of money. Some people didn't. But I'm going to pay them instead of just waiting a week to see if I could get Justin Fields, who I think is this great player. No, it's not happening. One or two things is going to happen. You're going to wait or you're going to give the Bears a great offer. So I respectfully have to say, if you're a Bears fan sitting here today thinking that the Bears have been throwing like dismissing great offers that we're really getting an offer for a number one pick or like first round pick, I should say, or a second round pick or two seconds. And somebody desperately wants Justin Fields, but we just won't let him go. I'm sorry. I I, I have to respectfully say you're you're pretty misinformed. That's a little delusional. <laughs> That's a little Delulu, as the kids say. So, no, absolutely not. Do I think that the Bears have just been throwing away offers and people want Justin Fields? Again, parts are true. Yes, they want to do their due diligence on uh, Caleb. Yes, they would like the contingency of Justin. And yes, the market for Justin's not great. All those can be true. And so... 
that is what I take away from that quote unquote rumor. Now, if you want to be a little more cynical, if you're the Bears and obviously coming out and saying, we want Caleb Williams full gas, because you remember back in the day that teams used to sign players to their contract before they drafted them if they were going number one. And they did that obviously because it was a more of a free market. Now, the, the contract is the contract. It's slated, so there's no reason for them to work on it. But if the Bears were to come out and just be like, we already got the contract done, we print up jerseys as Caleb Williams, then obviously somebody would probably try to use that to lower the offer, but it's not going to kill an offer. If I want Justin Fields, I'm not going to kill an offer over a fifth round versus a fourth round or third round versus second, I'm not going to do that. So to we, we can't sit here and act like the Bears haven't been playing the, well, we'll see, so that they can feel like they have some type of leverage in these trade talks. And so consequently, the trade market kind of gives you what it gives you. And if it's not as good as we want it to be, it's in my best interest to be like, oh, we're still not, you know, we 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 still not sold on Caleb Williams. Now, again, this is the mastery as I'm starting to really uh, pick apart for people, the mastery of sports media and the mastery of sports journalism. You say the vaguest thing so people can take it how they want and because that creates more traffic and content. So, again, what Rappaport is true on the surface, they want to continue to do the due diligence and feel comfortable on Caleb. We already knew that. And so people are going to take that. Some people might take that as, yeah, we 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 haven't really tested the trade market for real. Yes, we have. (laughs) Yes, we have. And again, if teams wanted Justin that bad, they would have made an offer that would have made the Bears make a, a move. So that's how I feel about it right now. Again, not to to dash anybody's hopes about this idea that the um, the Bears might bring back Justin. I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to tell you, you know, again, it is is weird that it's become a Caleb versus Justin type of discussion. Um, Philosophically, yes, but as in a literal, like I hate Caleb Williams because I have to like Justin fit like it's too much. It's much too much. And I think this new rumor slash report is very misleading. Now, let's get to this part. Everybody in a mama, and I meant to kick it off with this. Everybody named Mama is now talking about, well, you know what I think? The Bears could possibly have Caleb in Justin Fields. I see it, man. I seen it at least five people today. And I've seen tweets prior to today. And it's been it's been building up. And this is literally why I do my 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 podcast because or one of the reasons one of the big reasons is because people will try to play you like at the end of the day i'm not about to get offered a job at espn or fox or anywhere else tonight tomorrow and that's not my aim to at all obviously i don't really like sports media um but for people one of the things that really annoys me is we all have a platform. Like, obviously, if uh, I can't even think of somebody right now, because I was going to say Pat McAfee, but he played in the NFL. But even still, even if somebody that didn't play in the NFL and they build a platform, and I'm sure there's a lot of content creators that have platforms that I don't know of because I don't know them. But if somebody build a platform and people are listening to them, then, and they got followers, no one's going to say anything against them. I mean, obviously they'll talk crap, but nobody's going to be like, what do you even know? (laughs) They're not going to do that. But when someone doesn't have a platform, even if it was a player, 
It could be a player, a former player, coach in the NFL. If they don't have a platform, people try to dismiss you. And so I, I it just irks me because a lot of this stuff in the sports media is just so art like surface level and kind of trash. It's not really any not any, but it's very little original thought and real analysis. So I see it all the time. And and again, this is over years. This ain't the first thing I've been right about, but I see it over the years that I'll say something. And again, people backlash about it or they ignore it. Then once people in the media start saying it, oh, now it's a story. And I, and they're like, wow, that's a smart, that's a smart take. I've been said this, but again, not going to get a job offer off of it, but I like to have my evidence. I like to keep my evidence. And that's, that's one of the reasons I podcast because I said, well, I said over a month ago, nobody's talking about the idea that Justin Fields and Kayla could be on the team and not even people saying like people not thinking about it people actively saying absolutely not you can't do that and now we got those some of those same people well you know you you do realize that they could keep fields in williams and and they might trade them in the seat i'm like that's insane that i've been saying that (laughs) i've been saying that and again I'm not saying that's the best option, not saying that's the option that I would pick. I I, I could definitively say that's not the option I would pick, but still, I'm I'm the one that brought it up. And so I talked about it in the last few episodes, so I don't really want to reiterate too much. I would would ask you to go back and listen to it, Um, but I've talked about the idea of what it would mean to have Fields and Caleb or Fields and another rookie quarterback. Now, to me, that's the interesting question. Again, if you like another quarterback, and this is the scenario that everybody's kind of creaming themselves over with Justin Fields. Now that you realize Justin isn't giving you two second round picks, which was never the case, this is a scenario, you know, that really gets people excited is that, hey, Washington, hometown kid, chance to kick this thing off right. Give us some good. Give us some good. It ain't got to be crazy, but give us some good. Maybe a second round pick and uh, Jonathan Allen. Uh, you know, you know, something like that. Cool. All right. Actually, the guy we like probably gonna be there at three. New England or um, not Arizona, but Denver. Oh, or oh, not Oakland, Las Vegas. They they sign miss you. They probably be into it. So one of them, hey, hey, y'all want to move up to number two? Y'all want to jump the Patriots and try to get your boy? Holler at us. Now we trade back again and we got even more stuff. That's the scenario that gets people excited. So one or two trade backs. I don't know why New England would necessarily do that, but let's just say they did. We trade with Washington to two, then we trade with New England to three. And boom. Boom. We got all this new capital. We get the quarterback that we want and we bring Justin back. So that's the scenario that kind of interests me. Uh, Again, I'm not saying that's the most probable one, but that's the scenario that kind of interests me Um, because and I've always said that. I mean, I've said that before, even keeping Justin, that if we end up liking a quarterback that's not Caleb Williams more things could get interesting because we could add some capital. And so now you could have that same discussion when you keep Justin, whether you take Caleb or not. So there's that. But again, I've had that discussion about how that would look and it makes sense. Again, not ideal, but it would make sense. Now, the only thing I would say is that some people are talking about a, a camp battle And I wouldn't necessarily have that. I mean, I would split reps with the ones, but I'm not going to have a battle. I'm not going to. I would only keep Justin if I'm definitively going to start him. Now, there's some people that feel Justin should just sit and be the backup or be inactive and we'd be ready to trade him. And 
it's obviously you could do that, but I don't think he would be as valuable as if he goes out there and have two pretty good games. So that's me personally. But um, this possibility has been brought up by me. And I can safely say out of all the mainstream media that I consume, I didn't hear anybody bring it up before me. All I heard was people say that it couldn't happen. So that's where we are with the Justin Fields and Caleb Williams talk. Again, I, I would not get too I would not get too caught up in the idea that they want to do their due diligence on Caleb Williams. Obviously they do. Like the way that people are trying to spin it as they're trying to say they're not comfortable with him. Now, I will say this because I I mentioned character and all this, and I've mentioned that the reports that nobody wants to talk about are from USC, uh, not from the team, but people that cover the team in that area and people that are connected to the team and how they've said there's no leadership issues. There's no issues in terms of him being a bad guy or teammates not liking him and all of that. Um, I've heard a few uh, grumblings to the to the opposition of that, saying that some teams felt like he was only out there for himself, teammates, I should say. But again, depending on which teammates that was, we don't know. Um, from what we've heard in terms of how he treats everybody, is has never been any negatives. And then we heard, you know, at the combine and and with a lot of the the media crews, he was extremely gracious. And so, you know, again, you know, you got the number one pick. It's a little bit of draft day to movie. We're going to talk about everything uh, that doesn't sway me a whole lot, but it does fall consistent with what we heard from USC. So I don't want it to seem like I've ever felt that the red flags with his character were that he's a bad guy and all this stuff about his dad. I don't care about. I don't want to hear that. Um, he, he has to be his own person. We can't judge him off his dad. Um, all the stuff I'm hearing about him not being mentally tough because he cried to his mom has to be the most low basement level I IQ analysis I've ever heard. And so I, I don't even want to touch that. Um, so yeah, th th there's going to be, to me, a question how he gels with a locker room. And it's hard for me to explain, but in, until you really get around a team, you it is hard to really understand that these are people. And you're talking about from a person that has coached people that went to the NFL, that has met plenty of coaches in NFL. Well, I wouldn't say plenty of players, but I met plenty of NFL coaches. And so I've always known their players. I, I, I mean, people, I know that. But it's a difference to be around it. And so to really understand, it is no different than you leading a, a, a crew at work or leading a team or doing a project with a bunch of people. There's just egos, there's personalities, all that stuff matters. And so the real question for me is, what does a different cat look like in the NFL locker room? Because people, as much as people want to rage against the machine, especially nowadays, and I support it, you know, why do we got to act like this? What well, we don't need the Boy Scout. We don't need the, the the clean cut, you know, TV commercial quarterback. People can be different. People can express themselves. And I agree. But when it comes to you making that decision and your money on the line or your job on the line, human nature is you're going to default to what's, what, what you've been socialized to believe to be normal. So when you see a guy painting his fingernails or you see a guy that is like, and there's a lot of players like this, but not a lot of them are quarterbacks, but you know how these, how the Gen Z is, they, they, they just different. They into a different vibe. And so when you see a guy like that, or you see a guy that to me working with a lot of people, Caleb, from what I've seen, seems to have a bit of social anxiety and social awkwardness. And so when you see a guy like that, 
as much as we want to say Rage Against the Machine, you don't got to be the cookie cutter version. The cookie cutter version feels safe. And so that's why teams are, you know, bringing up these discussions of Caleb Williams. And so that is a real conversation that you got to have because you do got to be a leader in the locker room. Now, for as much as I understand, especially a quarterback, when you go out there and make plays, the rest of it don't matter. Like, as much as people say Russ became kind of a nightmare diva when they were winning, you didn't hear about it because they knew he was going to go out there and make plays. And I'm not saying that Caleb's going to turn into that, but if he's just a different type of dude, you know, if he's an alternative type of dude and he's your face of the franchise, some people might not be okay with that. And what I'm learning more and more is that, Again, this is a business. We know that we say that, but it truly is a business. There are people employed feeding off the cow that do not want to bring people in that might threaten their jobs. And so people are worried more about keeping their jobs. And we're not talking about just the GM and the head coach. We're talking about all types of people in the building are worried more about making choices to keep their jobs than they are to win football games. That's the truth. That is the truth. And so some teams, some GMs will not be bold enough to pick somebody that ain't cookie cutter. So that that is that. And we will see. But again, to suggest that the Bears haven't been trying to trade Justin because of that, I think is BS. All right, so let's get to this roster review um shouldn't take too long because we got a lot of returning pieces uh we did sign jonathan owens i mean i was gonna bring that up anyway since let me refresh twitter real quick um since i uh right before i started we signed a jonathan owens and uh what's his name daniel hunter went to the texans so <clears throat> i'm basing this off who we got under contract so where do we want to start quarterback we just talked about the running back room we know we signed deandre swift um i said my feelings on that uh four minutes not under contract uh we got the rookie uh johnson herbert homer obviously it's not going to be a bell cow nobody kind of does that anymore so we'll we'll figure out what the splits are i wouldn't be shocked if they end up cutting herbert or one of these guys just to save some money um but obviously you got i don't know i'm actually looking i don't know if the rookie's contract is much different than herbert because i think he's on a rookie contract too um but either way so i i wouldn't be shocked if we end up cutting herbert just because johnson's young and we drafted him so anyway that's kind of the running back group um nothing you know spectacular but you know how i feel about the running back position i think if the o-line gets built then the rest will fall into place but it will be important to have a running back because we want to play action off of it but swift got the money so you expect him to be the third down back and make a difference in the pass game as well receiver the big conversation darnell mooney goes to the falcons and I'm not going to dig deep into that. I, I'll miss him, but I, I'm happy for him, just like Justin. I, I'm, I would love both of them to go somewhere that is going to be a better fit and where their fans respect them more because the fans talking about uh, Mooney is insane. Obviously, the Falcons, now the Falcons are spending, so some people might be like, yeah, the Falcons just overpaying. But from if the reporter said he had a lot of interest he, he didn't take the discount to go kansas city kansas city really wanted him and i thought that would have been magical now kansas city want him matt Nagy, part of his draft obviously but uh he ended up taking more money to be with the falcons and as long as cousins is healthy man he's gonna have all the opportunity in the world so we want to blame mooney like he's throwing himself the ball then okay fine whatever so with that we have a pretty big hole obviously claypool is gone uh eq st brown and we got dj moore 
That's the the big name. Valus Jones hasn't been a whole lot. Tyler Scott was a rookie. We'll see what he can do. And then we got some kind of um, roster fodder at receiver. So uh, the discussion about, whoa, we really need wide receiver help. That was only the case when you decide Mooney can walk. If you would have signed Mooney to a decent deal, then our receiving room wouldn't look as bad. But, you know, whatever. I'm not going to get into that. So looking at receiver, it becomes a lot harder to pass on or trade up for a Nadunze or Neighbors. Because I guarantee you that's what's going to happen. I, I mean, right now with the mock drafts and the discussion, all oh, receivers just going to fall to nine. I don't think that's what's going to happen. Um, I think more than likely as you get into it, the the whispers are going to be somebody's trying to take a receiver early and you got to trade up if you want to get one. So it makes it a lot harder to pass on because I do think this is my own opinion that the Bears are really eyeing Dallas Turner as a real option. Obviously, they're going to have multiple options there, but I think Dallas Turner is a real option for them and it's going to make it hard to pass on these receivers. Although it's a real deep class, if you're going to bring a rookie receiver to have that much of a workload, some people are going to feel you need the cream of the crop. But again, position-wise, it's a deep class, so you don't have to. But the way our receiver room is looking is pretty suspect. All right, tight end, we got Komet coming back. We just signed Gerald Everett today. Um, very much a receiving tight end has improved his blocking has been pretty popular with a lot of the Shanahan McVay systems. I'm pretty sure he played for Shane Waldron at some point. So, um, the deal is cool and we bring him in. That's a nice option. But if you watch Seattle, you know, they love two to three tight ends, not one, two. So I wouldn't say Brock Bowers is out of the question. Um, it could still definitely be possible, especially because Everett, actually all three of them, Bowers, Komet, Everett could all uh, split out wide. So um, it will give us some options to play with. But I think Mercedes Lewis, I thought, was going to be a good value as a blocking tight end. We just never used them like that. So that was on us. So you take out Mercedes Lewis, you take out Tunyon, which were both not <laughs> a, a hit you bring in Everett that's a more legit option to me um we hit that so then the O-line our tackles pretty much the same we still got Borum under contract lord knows why um Braxton Jones Darnell Wright those are the main guys I really just don't see them moving those two if anything Braxton would become the swing tackle backup but I don't know. Part of me just doesn't feel they're going to move those guys. Um, we we got Bourne, which is technically the swing tackle. I think, well, I don't know what Shane Waldron's philosophy is, but I know that Poles would rather kind of have depth at that uh, spot. So we'll see what we kind of do if we carry four tackles or not. Then you go to the interior O-line topic of conversation. The thing is, you paid Nate Davis last year. I don't know what they feel about him now. I hear mixed opinions from the Bears fans from what I've seen. I think as long as he's available and there's nothing off the field, I think he'll get a chance to be a starter again. Um, obviously, you got Tevin Jenkins, who has dealt with health issues and being available. Ryan Bates comes in, potentially our center. We don't have a center. We got Kramer on the field or on the roster, but he's not a you know, starter. So Bates, potentially a center, um, potentially a backup, potentially a starter. We don't really know till we feel the rest of it out. But essentially, you have what you had last year, and you hope you get an upgrade at the center position, which I think is a huge upgrade. And the problem is, like I talked about availability, people talk as if our starting five unit was terrible when they played. And that's not the case. 
Um, the, the thing is, they didn't play together too often. So, a big if, but I feel like if you have Tevin and Nate Davis healthy the whole season, you really do just got to look at that center position and see what best option you have there. Obviously, you're going to want some depth, but I don't really see us um, bringing in somebody to become a starter because if we were, that was a Robert Hunt. That was a uh, Kevin Dotson. That was one of those guys. Now, I mentioned that I would personally for the O-line, I would go sign Jonah Williams or um, Josh Jones. Probably Josh Jones because Jonah is very adamant about being a tackle. He's complained about that. Josh Jones just he's good, but he hasn't, you know, made a name for himself. So I think he'd be more willing and he's more athletic. So, again, I keep harping on we're going to have his own base running scheme with play action off of that. So I really would like to bring him in to compete for the guard. And if he doesn't get that, then he would be a swing tackle for us in case Braxton or Darnell goes down. So the O-line, you know, is is kind of solid. So I, I guess let me back up. Where do we start? Running back. I would say running back, we are above average. Receiver, I would say we are average right now. And then tight end, I would say we're above average. But, uh, I, no, I would say we're good at tight end. We're good. Um, O-line, I, I think we're above average right now. Again, pending everybody being healthy. Then defensively, with our DNs, we, we still got Dominique Robinson on his rookie deal. Hasn't been a whole lot. Demarcus Walker off his deal last year, to be honest to me, was not that great. Montez Sweat, we know he's got the big deal. He's the main one. And then Ngakwe, everybody's savior, he's gone. So we, we don't have a lot on the edge as of right now. That's, a, I think, a big glaring hole. And I think our edge right now is above average, mainly just because of Sweat. Then you talk about the interior. We got the um, the young guys, second-year players. Billings is still on the team, and he was very underrated. Justin Jones is gone now. I thought he played well, too. Uh, and we'll more than likely add to that because we want a rotation. But we got three guys right now that I would say are above average as well because we do not have a true penetrating three technique. Then we get to the linebackers, of course, Edmonds and uh, TJ Edwards, and then Sanborn kind of falling behind them. I think we are uh, great at linebacker. And one of the things I was going to mention, and it was funny we signed Owens, was that I was going to mention people don't realize how uh, fortunate we are that we don't have to have multiple safeties or like more than two safeties on the field because of Tremaine Edmonds and TJ Edwards and what they're able to do in coverage because college has completely gone away from it. And the NFL is some teams have gone away from it where you don't have more than one linebacker on uh, third downs. And so that typical nickel has changed. You get some people that um, are going to give you more of an amoeba look, but a lot of people are doing more of a dime look, which is essentially a 4-2-6, which is a defense that I ran when I got my first defense coach because I knew that I could defend the spread. But that's becoming a popular thing. So it's very possible that Owens is depth because Brisker could miss time, you know, being a physical guy. Byard's old, and that's really the only safeties we got, which we'll get to. Um, so it, it's possible that Owens is coming in to be depth, but I could see a, a world where Owens is coming to play essentially that second nickel with um, uh, Gordon, or you have Brisker play that second nickel and Owens and Byer in the backfield or the back half because you want to keep Brisker in the box. 
So it's very possible. It's just weird because I was just about to say, yeah, we don't need multiple safeties like a lot of teams. And I still don't think we do. And and so we'll see kind of what they plan on doing with him. Um, so that was linebackers, corners. Obviously, we bring back um, Jalen. Tyreek Stevenson had a good rookie year. So we, we, we are, uh, ve- I would say, good. Very good. I'll say, well, I'll say we're good because I, Kyler Gordon, I don't believe in as a great nickel. He's he's just barely okay. So I'll say we're good at corner. And then safeties, as I just mentioned, um, really, you know, uh, Byard and Brisker and then a couple younger. I guess they moved Jalen Jones. I know he's a corner. I guess they moved him to safety, uh, at least according to this. But yeah we don't really have a lot of depth there but now we got owens so overall you look at it there's definitely i mean i put my wish list out there most of that's gone kenny moore just became the highest paid nickel to go back to uh the colts and i just really thought eber would want him maybe he did but maybe they didn't get him because they you know they got gordon but either way most of my wish list is gone and so I definitely think there are spots we could have been better. But with the deals that we've done right now, there's not many holes. Obviously, the quarterback is the biggest question we got to answer. Then from there, yes, we got to upgrade the receiving room. And then we got to upgrade a center. After that, it's more luxury because the edge rusher just ain't around. And um, at least a young edge rusher. And then a disruptive three technique is just not around. So the rest of it, I think we got our starters for the majority of the team. It's just a full few positions we got to fill. We got to get depth. But really, as we all know, the number one question is who's going to be our quarterback. So that is it for me. Go down to the comment section. Let me know what you think. Share it around. Get the conversation started. Thumbs up, subscribe. And remember, stay up and bear down.